Good evening, everyone. This is Jeffrey Harris, and you're listening to the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. So we are back to part two of our uh, Impact Wrestling Media Day roundtable interview series. Uh, Previously, we had Jimmy Jacobs with Impact Wrestling Creative on, and this time it is Scott Demore, who is uh, part of the executive team for Impact Wrestling. He used to be part of Team Canada and part of the TNA Creative Committee back in the day. We talked about that, and we also talked about this new era moving forward uh, for Impact Wrestling with uh, Access TV and what we can expect uh, from the future for Impact now that they have a new TV home uh, with Access TV. So we got into that. Similar to the last part with Jimmy Jacobs, this is a roundtable interview session, so you might hear other reporters asking questions just as a heads up. And for the intro music, the new intro music we had this week, I wanted to give a shout out to Ghetto Buddha for giving us this new original intro music to use for the show. So here we go with uh, the roundtable interview session with Scott Demore, and thank you for listening. Scott, how does it, how, we're on the precipice of a new era for Impact now. How does this, how does this feel for you to kind of you know, it's kind of. It, there were times where it felt like Impact was in the middle of a tornado. So, how does it feel that you guys were like, you guys were in the storm, and, and now you guys have. It feels like you guys have finally walked out of it. You're on the other side of it now. You're putting a lot of pressure on me coming out with a word like precipice. <laughs> I don't have a lot of $5 or $10 words in my vocabulary like Zeitgeist. that. Zeitgeist. <laughs> um. Look, I think that's kind of, in, in many ways, an accurate statement. Um, you, you, you can't run from the fact that uh, Impact Wrestling, with previous regimes, had uh, had some some rather difficult times. We'll say. Uh, I think that Anthem Sports stepping in, they've shown a commitment and dedication to uh, Impact Wrestling and a passion for Impact Wrestling that uh, that is refreshing. And I think that when myself and Don Callis came in at the beginning of 2018, it was it was comforting to know that we had the full support and uh, assistance of uh, Ed Nordholm, our president, and uh, Len Asper, who's our majority owner in uh, Anthem Sports. <coughs> and that's kind of what's allowed us to take a slow, steady approach to getting to where we are today. It was very hard for wrestling fans to hear in January of 2018. Um, They wanted to be told that things were going to be better instantly. And uh, we were very strongly of the belief that you there's no there's no quick fixes lots of people that came in and they're going to do quick fixes and make things better and we said there's no quick fixes there's no magical pill that's going to make everything okay the way we where we sit now the only way to make this better is to get up every morning and work extremely hard and make sure that we make small incremental increases in uh, in improvements in what we're doing and you're not going to realize it in one day, two days, and three days. You're going to realize it in six months, a year's time. When you look back at where you were and you see where you've progressed to. And I think we've done a pretty good job of, um, of steering you know, the impact ship in the proper direction and being patient and allowing things to develop. We didn't turn around and go like, hey, let's go grab the biggest stars from other places that are at the tail end of their career. The... the um, veterans that we brought in were all brought and are being brought for specific purposes and that's to be to be tools to help nurture what we have which we think is one of the best homegrown uh, rosters in professional wrestling 
and uh, we're very excited about our premiere on Access TV. Comes on the heels of a sold out Bound for Glory, and uh, we're excited to go out there and uh, domestically now in the U.S. with a broadcast partner like Access TV, uh, be able to put out one of the most dynamic products week in and week out. We've been doing that for a long time. We feel now, and now the masses get to see it. Is there a greater sense of stability, though, for, for you and Don now, now that, you know, the parent company now has a, you know, controlling interest in the networking? So now you guys know where you guys are going to be every week, and you guys you guys own the network now, or, or Anthem owns the network now. Does it, does it feel more stable for you? Well, here's the thing, and I know this is what's been difficult for a lot of, a lot of fans, is that we've kind of known for a long, long time okay. what the play was. And one of the hardest things to do, and me and Don talk multiple times a day, and um, one of the hardest things for us to do was to sit there and know that people were just dying to know what was going on. And people were feeling like we were losing momentum when really we knew what the end goal was. And we knew the value of still going out there. Like there was, there was never an opportunity to start mailing it in until we got to access. We knew we had to go out there week in and week out and put out the best dynamic, engaging product week after week after week until we got there. So it sounds it, like this has been in the works yeah, for a long time. Yeah, I mean this uh, this has been 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 an uh, an ongoing you, process for an extremely long time. When we made the decision that Pop was no longer going to be. Okay. Where where impact was going to be housed, you know, we knew that there was an end game to it. And these last many months, and, and seeing the frustration of fans with with the time that we spent on Pursuit Network was 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 difficult because we knew where we were going and we knew why we were doing it. Um, but they did it. But you're being very diplomatic about it. Like you're saying, like you know, people were frustrated. People well, were like, oh, this company's this company's dead. They're like you guys, no one's watching you guys. You know, it's been there's been a lot of negativity. But like, it sounds like you you like you guys. This has been the end, not the end goal, but this has been the goal for a while, right? Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, it's been an ongoing process. Like a deal like this doesn't come together over the course of a few weeks or a month or two. This has been going on for an extremely long time like I said it goes back to the days when we were on pop and uh, certainly there's no question that uh, there's a lot of fans you can I'll use the term frustrated you could say pissed off you could say angry you can say negative uh, certainly all are are accurate but the fact is I mean I'll look at it this way um, at least there was people that were still if you're frustrated with something, if you're angry at something, it means you still care about it. It's the reaction and it, thing. Yeah, and it means there's still a chance to fix that. So like I said, it was very frustrating for us because, you know, all we could come out and say is, guys, it's, 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 going, to, it's, going, to, it's going to be good. But after everything that Impact Wrestling fans, anyone who's gone on the journey of Impact Wrestling from, uh, what is it, June 19th of 2002 to today has been, has been bait and switched and lied to and screwed over by uh by previous regimes so uh, there's there's no there's no there's no real answer to a fan who says well why should i believe you because i've, I've fallen for that game you know for that trick many times like you know lucy's told me the football's gonna be there when i go to kick it and by the time i get there it's gone and i end up on my head um it's happened to them a bunch and um that's why we knew coming in one of the things we had to do was try to reestablish trust and we knew that wasn't going to be easy now scott if i can put my comrade thompson hat on for a second since you were part of the company back in uh, 2006 if i can look at tna and if you know what felt kind of like the Starcade '97 moment for me it was kind of when uh, Jeff Jarrett won the title back at I think Slammiversary 2006. Like, like, do you remember like what the decision was to have Jarrett win the title again back at that time, which I don't think was the best idea for the company at the moment. When I think, I, f I feel like at that time you guys had the best young roster in wrestling at that time. You had Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, all are in W... Uh, no, Bobby Roode, Bobby Eric Roode, Young. Team Canada. Yep. Yep. Um, just some of the, the X Division guys, like the best guys you'd ever want on your roster. I'm just not sure that was the right move. Do you remember what the decision was to have that happen back then? I mean, your memories. 
it's probably stronger than mine on some of this stuff. Um, but I mean, you look at that time period. I mean, Slammiversary 06 uh, comes very uh, close. Just uh, is only a couple months before what I think was was probably another pretty major um, development for for the company at the time, and that was the the repositioning of me from I, mean, we, I thought we had a great crew together with yeah, myself and Mike today Jeremy Borash Bill Banks Dutch Mantel we had a great group together um, and by September of uh, 06 Russo Vince Russo was back I had been moved over to a different position and I think uh, things started moving in a different direction and I think one of the, the frustrating things I know for, for guys like myself and Mike today in that was we were committed back then to the same type of things that me and Don are committed to now. I think that there was a frustration maybe at that time that uh, that we weren't progressing quick enough. Um, and when you when you're frustrated, you start making snap decisions. And I think there's probably been more than one snap decision made by this company over the years. We had the best young roster in professional wrestling then. Um, and you can go and look at it, and you know it is, because you look at everything it's done around the wrestling world since. And we had that group here, and we're working with that group. And, and, and if we could have stayed the course and had the AJ Styles and the Bobby Roods and the America's Most Wanted and everything else be the stars, then, I mean, I don't think we would be sitting here today talking about Impact Wrestling, you know, in any of this. Because I think, I think all of the, or a lot of the adversity that ended up happening was because of decisions that were made to, people were scared of change, and the, the quick fix to them was let's go with what was someplace else before. Well, the, the Jimmy Hart line is if, you, if uh, you do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. Um, so if you're happy with how things worked out before, keep doing it. Because you're going to get the same result. But if you're going to go back to something that was tail end of WCW or uh, other things, well, then you're going to get the same result. <laughs> now, I mean, the new Russo era back then, so it sounded yep. like it was a snap, just sort of like decision to bring in Russo at that time in, 2000, in like fall 2006, around the time I think Kurt Angle came in. Mm -hmm. Is that what it was? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, I mean, I was the guy that he was he was replacing. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't exactly part of the the discussion period. But my understanding is, it was uh, it was late spring through the summer is where like that started coming together. And uh, I mean, I want to be clear with, with about one thing. Um, and people in wrestling can villainize Vince Russo for his writing and everything all they want. But I'll tell you right now, Vince Russo walked through that door, I'd get up and give him the biggest hug. Um, because, you know, whether you agree with him or disagree with his, his, uh, his philosophies, and me and him had many disagreements. He was, like, at least to me, they were always respectful debates and discussions. And even after Vince came in, people were like, because I basically had to start going to and like, like, like taking direction from Vince, go back to doing that and, and executing his vision. Um, and we were able to do that because Vince, Vince is, you know, take all the showbiz away from him and everything else. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a decent guy if he was sitting at this table. And uh, I always respected the fact that when I was in the captain's chair, I wanted people to work their hardest to execute our, our team's vision. And then once I wasn't the guy in that, in that chair and Vince was, then I feel we we're, we're all have to work as hard as we can next to execute his vision, their vision. And, um, you know, personally, I think it was the wrong decision. Um, that's nothing, my personal opinion. Um, but it was uh, the company's decision to go that route. And... Um, they're the ones that uh, made the decision, and they're the ones that either reap the benefits or pay the consequences. How do you feel about, you know, Team Canada kind of being like the major starting point, like for the careers of guys like Bobby Roode and, and Eric Young, who, who are still working and have great careers today, and gone on win titles in NXT and WWE? Uh, I mean, I'm really honored of, and uh, proud of what we did as, as Team Canada. Like, uh, at that point in time, I was pretty comfortable. I was like, I'm done as a performer. And so when I got the phone call and it was like, hey, we're going to do, you know how we've done a, a Team Mexico and we've got a Team NWA. We're going to do a Team Canada. Okay, cool. And then when I was told that they wanted me to be the the, the mouthpiece or the, the coach or whatever for it, then... Uh, 
I was ki- I kind of like politely declined because I felt I was done as a as a performer. I had done that. Now I wanted to focus on on, on working behind the scenes. And uh, it was kind of put to me nicely that it was a direction and not a question. And uh, honestly, it's one of those things where in hindsight, I'm glad that, that it was done. Because um, Jeff pretty bluntly told me that I was going to do what was expected of me. But, and, but go ahead. Oh, no. I, I was just going to say, my thing was, once we got into it, um, like Team Canada was a team. Like, you know, like we walked around wearing those Team Canada jackets. We traveled together. Um, we picked each other up. Um, you know, if you, if, 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 if Showtime Eric Young had a problem, you know, if you had a problem with Showtime Eric Young, you had a problem with A1, you had a problem with Petey Williams, you had a problem with Bobby, you know, you had a problem with me. That's that's what we were. We were a team. And we picked each other up. And uh, it was a it was a, it was a great situation where at that time those guys were so young. And I didn't see it quite at the time, but I quickly you know when it started, but I quickly saw that over the course of time my role was gonna become less and less important. If you look at it, we probably over relied on me in some of the early days. Cause those guys hadn't learned how to do some of the things like get heat. They were still finding themselves talking wise. My job was to express what Team Canada was doing. And then my job was to go out there and quote unquote get heat, which you know people have a tendency to hate me, so that worked. Um, but uh, the real goal of Team Canada was to launch careers. And if you look at Petey Williams and uh, Eric Young, and of course Bobby Roode, then uh, I mean I think if you want if you don't call all three of those home runs, then I think you got to at least call them all. Uh, I call them home runs. Yeah, I would. And but, I mean if you count classified as anything else, you can't classify it as anything other than a than a game winning hit. But my favorite promo I think was when you when you said. Instead of saying USA, you said USA. <laughs> do you do, is that what you, is that how you actually do you say USA? I do not. In, in but <laughs> I just thought, yes, this guy is this, this is great. You but know, like, how did you come up with that? Well, our, our approach on the Team Canada thing was really, and, and it, we were kind of just the beginning of the politically correct era. Right. So you weren't gonna, there, there was no Russians, there was no Iranians. Um, you knew you were not going to do anything like what was the 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 uh, guy that um, um, oh sod with the guy that got in all the trouble for the oh, hanging Muhammad thing Muhammad is yeah. you know you really couldn't push envelopes in that direction so our thing was let's take the least offensive thing possible Canadians you know a, a group of people like I'm I am not your normal Canadian Canadians normally are quiet polite and, and just decent people. I'm the exact opposite. But the idea was taking something that's really not offensive and and playing it up as if we were the Russians or the Iranians or whatever else. Like we were coming in, we were invading, we hated America. We were gonna we were we were gonna destroy the you know the USA. The USA was evil. I mean it was it was kind of like that. That was kind of our approach to it. And Team Canada, we always joked that if you watch uh, Impact Wrestling over the course of about a year plus, you can almost relate it to Pinky in the Brain. We work up a ridiculous master plan that is for us to take over, uh, you know, at the time TNA Wrestling. And once it all blows up in our face and it doesn't work, you know, it's almost like, well, you know, let's go, guys. we got to prepare for next week. What's next week? You know, what are we going to do next week? We're going to do the same thing we do every week. Try to take over this company. But, yeah. but like, I think the context was, like, there were two non-Americans, like, in a match, and, like, the, the crowd was chanting USA because they were going against Team Canada. Yeah. And, like, it's like, they're, they're not even American, and you're chanting USA. And I just thought, <laughs> what, a br- what a brilliant, what a brilliant, like, but do people in Canada actually say USA? Is no. Any- okay. No, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe, maybe someplace they do. Okay, but, but I... I, I, I that that's kind of the, the Scott Demore moment that always kind of oh, cool. I, I always remember. So I wanted to let you know about that. No, I appreciate it. You know what? It's always it's always nice, and I've I've had so many people over the last bunch of years, and more so since I got back reemerged in wrestling. People that now have grown up and are saying like, "Hey, I remember this or that." It's it's uh, it, it it's it's kind of cool because you get to have you get to have an effect on uh, on people in, in an emotional way that, that stays with them all these years later. I gotta tell you, growing up at the time. I thought the Canadians were more like you guys and not like this polite, you know. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is we've kind of ruined the reputation of, of Canadians for <laughs> for an entire generation of wrestling maybe, fans. Maybe <laughs> well, I'll take it. Yeah. Um, so, Scott, um, what makes Access such a great partner for you guys where you're at with your current roster? I mean, I think when you look at it right now, uh, 
you know, with this with this uh, development, with the acquisition of, of Access TV here, um, that's me. Is that you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. Unless Don Callis is I messaging you. Um, I'm sorry. It's, pro- it's probably it's probably. Have you mentioned my name enough? So, um, but I, look, it, it's great from the sense of it now. Like I said, we've been confident of what was coming. Now, wrestling fans can be confident that Impact Wrestling is around because you know there's a complete partnership and integration now with Anthem Sports between Impact Wrestling and Access TV. And it's a great platform for us. It's a much larger platform than we've been on in a long time. So from a, a period where every new development television-wise for Impact Wrestling was a step down, this is now a huge step up. And it's a platform, it's a network that knows how to handle professional wrestling as you've seen with New Japan Pro Wrestling and WOW. So uh, certainly we think it provides now the domestic broadcast component at a level that allows us to to continue the the slow incremental growth we've seen over the past two years. We can now take that to the next level and uh, have a bigger platform to display what we think is the is the best and most dynamic uh, wrestling product on a week-in and week-out basis. And what do you think Impact's place in the uh, current markets is and is going to be? Is, is it that critically acclaimed uh, product in contrast to the um, the uh, Buku de Beppo down the lake? I guess, um, do you guys aspire to be more like the uh, mom-and-pop Italian restaurant across the street from the uh, big chain? Uh, I mean, I I don't think we're quite mom and pop. I mean, if you look at it, we are far and away the number two digital platform for professional wrestling in the world. Uh, I just saw an article that came out recently. You look at it, it's basically WWE, and then after WWE, it's it's us, and we're starting to approach three million subscribers on YouTube. I mean, YouTube. you guys we have, have a, a network. We now. have a couple million, a couple billion uh, views, uh, more than two billion views. Nobody else is in that ballpark. Impact Plus has been a, uh, a success in a growing digital platform where we look to house both our own product and give exposure to other uh, products out there, whether it be championship wrestling from Hollywood, whether it be whether it be Smash Wrestling. Um, we become the one-stop shopping for things not WWE in a lot of ways. And, uh, like, look, we're not the guys that are going to sit there and say, hey, um, we need to do this because WWE is doing this. We need to do this because AEW is doing this. We're in an amazing time for professional wrestling as a, as a, as a business and for professional wrestling fans with everything that's going on. What we do, uh, and we feel very strongly about this, is we do an amazing job of telling uh, well-thought-out, long-term, dynamic storylines that have depth, both for the characters and for the conflict. And uh, we think that's something that's been sometimes overlooked in professional wrestling recently. It's been, you know, for the longest time, there's so much focus on the in-ring product, or sorry, on the on the characters, and the in-ring product was neglected. Now, over the last many years, you've seen the in-ring product is, is amazing, and, 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 you know, the athleticism is, is at an all-time high. But as the offset to that is there's been a, there's been a bit of a neglect towards the storytelling and the depth of character. So what we really feel we do and what we've tried to focus on is providing that depth of character and that type of dynamic storytelling. And to me, there's lots of examples, but the perfect one as we sit here right now is Ace Austin. Here was a guy who was, you know, a high flyer, good high flyer, good wrestling, but like what made you, what, what stuck out about him other than he could pull a card out of his uh, sleeve. So now what we've taken and done with him is provided some depth of character, I've got him now comfortable talking, we're, you know, we're, we're flushing that out, and then we put him in a storyline with some conflict and some emotion with Eddie Edwards, who's one of the all-time best in the business. And uh, you've really seen such a rapid growth and development with Ace, and, and that's what I think we've done through a lot of our roster, whether it's a young guy like Ace Austin, or whether it's taking, you know, Eddie Edwards, who's a great wrestler, and taking the character in a whole new direction to try to add a whole other dimension to him. That's the one of the strengths that we think we have as a company. Company. The in-ring product's great, but the emotion and the storytelling we think is uh, is top-notch and is really at the forefront, the leader in the industry. What do you think about co-promotion for you guys right now? Will it continue uh, in this new era? I think something that we've consistently put out there is that we think stronger together. And uh, you look at it, at, whether it's at the top end with our relationship with uh, AAA Lucha Libre, 
and the way we've been able to assist each other and help each other and been great partner promotions between two large companies or whether it's the the smaller uh, arrangements with you know the Ohio Valley Wrestlings the Pro Wrestling Revolvers the Destiny World Wrestlings these type of organizations I think that that's something that uh, provided that it's a situation that works for both companies and uh, gives something unique to the fans, well, then it's a win-win-win. Why? Uh, um, are you able to talk about...